This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rinse at a time. Back with the one and only Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, bud? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm excited. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so you uh, you caught in or, or, or tuned in to Paul Tudor Jones, kind of summarizing what's going on, looking over the last 50 years or so. I missed it. I have not seen it. So I just want to sit back, absorb, and listen. What did the great Paul Tudor Jones have to say? Yeah, so to give some context as to who Paul Tudor Jones is, he's one of the best macro traders there is, one of the most macro investors. So taking all the major economic news around the world and investing based upon it, which is one of the most skillful things there possibly could ever be because you're taking in the content over the entire globe and making decisions off of it. You're not just focused on small cap or oil stocks. It is everything. How do we invest? Here we go. But what he did this morning was not necessarily talk about how he's investing moving forward. He talked about what drove the stock market over the last 50 years. And he took each decade and in three sentences on each one, broke it apart as to here's the major theme of the decade. Here's what drove the market. And he started in the 70s. He's like, the 70s were inflation, right? So there's no, no other way to look at the 70s. And it was not a good decade for the market whatsoever. So the market traded essentially sideways. You made a little bit of money throughout the decade. But again, that's a decade worth of time. And inflation was rampant, right? So we got Fed funds coming out of the 70s at 20%. Two zero percent on Fed funds. You had mortgage rates at obnoxious prices, et cetera. So obviously they were trying to cool down the economy there and they did so. And so that's the 70s. Then he goes, roll into the 80s and he goes, 81, 82, 83, you're still on the control inflation band. And he goes, the market was not good for the first three years. And then they controlled inflation and bang, the market erupted out of the other end. And with, with the one caveat of flash crash, of, of, of Black Monday, I'm sorry, I confused those two some things. Yeah. Black Monday, 1987, the stock market in one single day traded down 22%. One day. So we talk about down 25 right now, and 25 is scary. The market traded down 22% in a day, which is just crazy. So that was the 80s. The 90s were the best market and economic backdrop we probably ever have had in this country. You could argue the 50s maybe. And so what we had was just that Goldilocks where inflation was under control. There was a lot of innovation and technology built into the market. At the end of the 90s, you had the internet start to leak into the market, which propelled it even more northward. And then the 2000s. 2000s were literally just the lost decade. Throughout the 2000s, if you invested early in the 2000s, you didn't make any money through 2010, which is crazy to say. There are very few decades where you've ever experienced that. But you had a dot-com bubble burst right at the beginning of the 2000s. And the meltdown through 2000, 2001, 2002 was brutal because it just kept chipping away at investors and keep kept hitting out their knees. It was just, yeah, gapping downwards. Then it would pop up a little bit and gap downwards. And it was just like attrition over time. And then you obviously had things start to settle in 2002, 2003, started to run again. And then we got over our skis in the housing market. And so you had people leveraging one house into the next. And that was a problem from the housing market perspective, but it was also a problem from the banking perspective because the banks had too many mortgages on their books that were underwater. They then repackaged them and sold them into the market. And the market said to them at some point, they're not worth anything. And the market locked up. And we were on the brink legitimately of a financial meltdown of our economy in general. So that's the 2000s. Then you go into 2010s. And that is just a decade of monetary and fiscal stimulus. You have central banks around the world just pumping money into the market. And you have this eruption upward in the market for essentially a decade straight. You could do anything right. And granted, there were times throughout there, 2015 was a little bit of a tough market, et cetera. But along the way, if you zoom out and look at 2010 to 2020, it was a great, great time to be invested. And now he says 2020 hits. And he goes, we pump more injection in the system. And he goes, where do we go from now? And he said, I think the 2020s will be known as the decade of fiscal retrenchment. Fiscal retrenchment, controlling government spending around the world. And he says, how do we chew through that is totally unknown. But he thinks when you zoom out 30 years from now and look back, we're going to look back at this decade and say, this was the decade where we controlled government spending, inflation in there as well. Government spending and inflation is going to be what is going to be the story of the 2020s. How well do we deal with that will be the result of what the stock market does. So 
I, that was a little longer. He did it much more concise than that, actually. But that was wow. like, I just looked at it. And I was like, man, he's so good because those smart people are able to take all this tough stuff to understand and just bring it down and say like, here's what it is. Cut and dry. Yeah. Well, I'm, I was a little nervous because, again, I haven't seen this and I will definitely go seek it and go find it. I was afraid he's like, well, it's rinse and repeat 1970s. That's what I thought he was going to say. I'm like, shit, the seventies were terrible. It was a time of powdered milk. Cause we had no money. Oh, right. No, he didn't say that. He's he, he, he is in the camp that we have not gotten rates to where they need to be. He talks about the number one thing they need to be focused on is wage inflation. Wage inflation's five, five right now. He talks about getting it down to kind of that three, three and a half percent ballpark. And that will get us to an inflationary mark of 2% because that delta between those numbers is, is that uh, productivity. productivity yeah. But uh, he says that that's where we need to go. And he, he, he kind of says we're getting close, but we're not there. Yeah. Yeah. I love Paul Tudor Jones. Um, yeah. He's, he's a legend in the business. And it's he, also he great kinda... that he kind of sounds like a redneck too. So you're like, <laughs> oh, this guy's not that smart. And then he starts rattling off stats and you're like, Whoa! Woo! <laughs> boy knows and I can say that because I, I I'm a redneck myself. I grew up in the middle of nowhere, so it, uh, one uh, redneck can call someone else a redneck, and it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, do me a favor. Where can people find you? Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram. Is probably the best spot. That's awesome. Thanks, buddy.